from New York. I am from New York. I can tell because of your shirt and accent. And my <laughs> do, and you, hat. do you think I'm trying to? Yes, I'm from New York. Yes. <laughs> do you miss it a bit? Are you overcompensating with your clothing? <laughs> <laughs> Just in case you're wondering, <laughs> where, where's that guy from? <laughs> Maybe, maybe, and then I got a Forever Queens tattooed on my back, cause you just want to get stupid tattoos sometimes. What year were you born? I I was born July second, nineteen seventy six, which makes me forty two now. I. What is it like being a forty two year old male porn star? Oh, okay. Um. What is it like being a 42-year-old 42 male porn star? Um, well, I definitely work more now than I did when I started. So uh, I've been what doing it. What age did you start? Uh, I've been doing it 14 years now. So the math says I'm 20, I was 28. So you're you're working more now than you I am working more now. Yeah. I think it just I mean, I did obviously when I came into the business. Um I think I started out with Joanne Angel, Burning Angel. And as she got popular her company like I got popular cuz I was in so many of their beginning movies and I think my strong point was acting. I would definitely say I've developed my skills of acting a lot throughout the years and porn has kind of given me that like I mean, I don't know what's more of a challenge of like improv on the fly, <laughs> come up with stuff while you got to like have sex or, you know, about to have sex or something and still keep it interesting and funny. So, and after winning like, a, you know, a bunch of awards from ABN and Expos and just throughout the years, like my name is finally gotten out there more. I'm, I'm grateful for it. Like, you know, I know I'm very lucky and... I see how the industry is and how the a lot of people aren't getting work. And I just when I'm on set, I just I try to bring like happiness and joy and joke around and just do what I can because uh, it really means a lot to me in this work. Like I really appreciate it and I love all the people I work with. And when I get those phone calls or messages, are you available? I'm like, yes, 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 I am. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It seems like a rule of thumb in porn. Um, stick with people uh, who are in the same industry because it's hard to find somebody on the outside that understands um, somebody who fucks for a living and has acceptance of that. Well, that, that is true. Um, and I've seen relationships last and I've seen relationships fall apart very fast. And relationships in general are just hard to maintain. So even if um, you're in a relationship with somebody in the business, like there is a little baggage that isn't as like poured on as someone who has to deal with it who's not in the business. But I think it's just more personalities too and people and being young and not really knowing, like if they only had a handful of relationships and now they're in this job where they're having sex with all these girls and they just like, oh, I want to date everybody or I'm in love with everyone. Like, that never works out. It just falls apart. And then people will be like, well, he's on my no list now. And then he, you know, goes to the next guy, girl, whatever. He's on my no list and blah, blah, blah. And then, like, I've just heard about a handful of guys actually recently that whenever their name comes up, it's like, I'm never working with that guy. I'll never hire that guy. And... It's all because of how whatever they did offset and like trying to date somebody or being aggressive with them, like you why don't you wanna see me or anything? Or is their ex or is their ex? Yeah, and if they're you know, it's that saying like don't, you know, date people at work, but in this industry it's a little hard because a lot of people are also lonely in this industry because a lot of people outside don't know how to deal or can't even comprehend what it means to be a, an adult star, like somebody who performs in this. Nobody on the outside understands that. They're like, oh, but you bang girls all day. You're the god. Like, I admire you. And it's just like, that's work, you know? Like, when you go home, it's nice to have somebody home to say hi and to snuggle with and 
talk to and just do something with. Definitely in our industry now, like when people speak up or kind of hint at like self-hurting or suicidal thing, like I think our industry is definitely, um, definitely after August Ames passed away, like people I think a little more aware now that like, oh, I'm gonna, if somebody says something, I'm gonna reach out and just say something. I think we should yeah. because we, we, it really kind of is like us against the world. And as much as the world likes us, like they're not gonna proudly like stand up and say, I watch porn and I love it. Why do you think that is? I would feel from going overseas to Europe and like stuff like that, I, I just feel like it's just this thing in America and this whole like religion, whatever people have been spoon fed or brainwashed with and like just told this is wrong you know so it, it takes a while for somebody to like break away or to realize like i'm going to think what i want to think like so it's like sex is wrong and oh sex for money that's more wrong yeah you know but they'll totally look past being racist or kicking someone out of the store like being a horrible person i don't know what's going on everything seems really fucked up with a lot of people and the media i just feel like has really given everybody a stage to talk shit. But isn't it, uh, I mean, it's about hypocrisy that you're bringing up. And I think out of everything even, you know, the the easiest representation of that to see, because so many people watch porn because it's available everywhere now yeah. um, to anyone um, who can get online. Um, so, you know, the most looked at form of entertainment anywhere and yet, the majority of people are embarrassed by it. Yeah, people don't want to admit that, or that they watch it, or they're scared to. And I don't know. It's again, it's like what has been, what have we been told in our country for so long? Like we could totally watch people getting decapitated in a the theater and cheer for it, but like sex between two people, the most natural thing that we all are giving the opportunity to do is looked down on. Have you ever been mistreated because of being a porn performer? I've been, you know, kind of harassed online and stuff like that, but, uh, and I've also, were in situations like, I did something for Funny or Die. Some people knew who I was because I was in on the joke and then all the other people that were coming in, they like didn't know. But right off the bat, they're like, I could tell they were like, why is he here? And these were all like actors and comedians and writers on like sitcoms that everybody knows. But their first impression of me was like, who's this guy? Like, oh, why is he here? I could, like, you could tell they were like seething or disgust. And it's just like, I don't want to like talk to him. Like, why is he here? The longer I stayed there and the more longer that people got to know me, the more. I broke down and they were live streaming and everything. So the more, the longer I was there, it almost became like, this is cool to do, but I also like, I just want to kind of show people like, we're not disgusting perverts. Like anybody else in that room, just because they don't say it out loud is a more probably worse disgusting pervert than I am because they play one role and it's just like, well, I'm on TV and I'm respected and I'm a good comedian and everyone likes me and XX followers and I have this amount of money. so. Just nope. pronounced triple X triple. <laughs> But, like, nobody's going to look at me and look at me for shame because I don't do what he does. I'm a dad. I have kids. And that is not my go-to when I, you know, bring them to school or I meet parents or at the playground. Like, it's not like, hey, this is my son and blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah. You want to see me dip my balls in someone's asshole? Because I have it, right? <laughs> like, no, it sucks. What do you tell people? I tell them an I'm an actor. Because I do do acting. So I'm not fully lying, but I'm not, like, I make... You're not my, putting your kids in the back. I'm never, I'm never going to do that. And I will, and they're so young, but I will have that talk with them. I, I think anybody, you know, who's a parent, Whatever you got to do to make the money to take care of your family, like, do it. And anybody that wants to judge you, you can go suck a dick. You know, a bum dick, a bag of bum dicks. Like, because it's bullshit. Because anybody who wants to, like, shame somebody for providing is a horrible fucking person. At a time, you know, so your parents at a time that 
there's more sex workers than there's ever been on video. So that are performers that could have done porn because you're part of the internet age of parenting. I mean, it used to be like, oh, by accident, I walked into like mommy daddy's room. Or I saw them changing or something like that. But there's a I better mean, chance you'll see them fucking on the internet. <laughs> yeah, there really is. And, you know, if if no one's buying it or watching it, we wouldn't be making it. So like for everyone that's like, you guys are evil, just be like, there's a c couple million people who think you're fucking wrong. When you came in, do you remember the older male yeah, performers? The, the, I remember when I came into the industry and like being on set with like Evan Stone was like, whoa, that's Evan Stone. Because when he was on set, everyone was like, Evan. Like it was like a crowd around him, you know? Tommy Gunn, like he's another legend. Like a lot of these guys, um, Mark Wood, there's just like a, there's a handful of guys that- All of them still performing, by the way. Still performing. They were Not, older then. They were older then and they're still performing. Now, like being 42 and I'm at a point where in like tweets, people are like tweeting like legend, Tommy Piss, and it's like, that's weird. I was like, really? You know, like after a decade, you're a legend? Like, I don't know about that. <laughs> but it's, I mean, it's interesting just to be a male performer. And I mean, you know, kind of how it goes. Like girls can make more money, but they have a shorter life expense. Career. Career expectancy. Yeah. yeah. And unless they play their cards right and get learn directing and all that and that ain't like, they can make something more than themselves. Do you think that new male performers look at you the way you saw Evan Stone and Tommy Gunn and Mark Wood when you joined? I, I, I think we each, you know, like Evan was special, I think. Yes, he was a male performer and he had that like, you know, there was a certain genre of guys that were more like macho buff, like tans, like hairless dudes that just like hairless by the way because it went the generation before was i guess the mustache i feel like it was the hairy porn, the porn yeah. stash then no porn no porn stash and now we're at the porn beard stage porn beard yeah i i mean maybe that's just uh i think it kind of went back to like dudes could kind of look the way dudes want with tattoos and I, I mean, it's weird. Like, I say that, but then, like, I know I'm not this, like, buff, ripped guy, and I usually have a beard because I like having a beard, and people accept me for it. Like, so I don't know if, um, besides having sex, if people just, ex like, like me for what I do before I have sex, or, like, the acting and the comedy or the drama or whatever, people kind of, I think a fan base has grown for me because... It's not, I just don't do one thing. It's like they have a few things they could like me for. How do you want to be seen? I want to be seen as the average Joe who walked into a room of gods and stood out among the best. I know I'm like 5'7". I fluctuate between weight. People see me and if they don't know me and when they find out I'm a porn star, they're like, really? I never would have expected that. And I accept that. I think that's funny. And I think a lot of guys kind of, kind of relate to me. There's not too many guys that are in this category of like, he looks like a normal guy, you know? And I think that's what's helped Tommy Pistol stand out. Well, thank you very much, Tom. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, guys, for having me.